Good afternoon and um, welcome to the 45th meeting of the Honolulu Liquor Commission. Uh, please silence all of your electronic devices. If you're appearing today, uh, please introduce yourself, your client, and spell your names for our commission's reporter. If you're here to testify on any agenda item, please come forward, be sworn in, uh, identify yourself, and spell your name. Uh, Commissioners, let's move into the uh, public hearing. Calling agenda item number one, transfer application number 19-15731 from Pint Size, Hawaii. Christina O'Hara for the applicant. My last name is spelled O-H-I-R-A. Next to me is Sandra Hamada. She's the manager of applicant. Her last name is spelled H-A-M-A-D-A. Thank you. Ms. Harai. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. This application has received zero written protests, zero letters of support. Applicant has met statutory requirements for the submission of this application. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application? Seeing none, commissioners. Mm -hmm. yeah, way, yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. motion to approve application number 19-15731. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number one <coughs> for application number 19-15731 is approved. Thank, and thank you, you for thank your amendments. Appreciate that. Calling your agenda item number two, transfer application number 19-15898 from Sung Kang Hee. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. I'm Min Young on behalf of um, Sung Young Hee Green Businesses um, Sunshine Market. Thank you. Ms. Harai. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. This application has received zero written protests, zero letters of support. Applicants with statutory requirements for the submission of this application. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application? Seeing none, Commissioners. Mm -hmm. okay, motion to approve the um, transfer application number 19-15898. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number two. Transfer application number 19-15898 is approved. Thank you, Ms. Let's Thank you. call agenda item number 35 out of order, commissioners. Just to me. Calling agenda item number 35, request number 19-16819. Good afternoon, uh, Chair O'Donnell, members of the Honolulu Commission. James H. Dooley appearing for applicant jungle park thank you very much commissioners this is a request for, uh, to downgrade the category of application 19-15236 from a restaurant general license category 2 to a restaurant general license category 1 standard and mr lee your client thoroughly understands the requirements of this category in class that's correct thank you okay very good commissioner Motion to approve request number 19-16819. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 35, request number 19-16819 is approved. Now we go back on to the public hearing and we call agenda item number 3, application number 19-15236 from Jungle Bar, LLC. Again, Good afternoon, uh, Chair O'Donnell, uh, Commissioners, James H. Dooley, appearing for Jungle Bar, African Jungle Bar. Thank you very much. Ms. Arai. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. This matter has been continued from the May 2nd, May 9th, May 16th, and May 30th meetings. Public hearing kept open. In this instance, uh, administration's position is that applicant has failed to comply with the requirements of HRS 28157C3 in terms of its mail out. Accordingly, our recommendation is that the public hearing be canceled. Uh, then the applicant will follow with uh, republication in the paper of a new public hearing date and mail out. Thank you, Ms. Horai. 
Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application? Thank you, Mr. Beard. Um, commissioners? Motion to cancel public hearing and application number 19-15236. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number three, application number 19-15236 is canceled. Uh, the public hearing is canceled and the application is canceled. Correct, Ms. Horizon? That is correct. If I could just note for the record, when yes. this matter is uh, put up for publication and mail out again, it will be for a restaurant general license category number one standard bar and not a category two live entertainment or recorded music and dancing as the commission has voted to downgrade or permit the downgrade of the application. Yes, very good. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Mr. Beard, do you understand? Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Lee. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's go. Um, let's take agenda item number. 35 out of order? Okay. We did that one. 33. 33. Uh, 33. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Let's take agenda item number 33 out of order again. Following agenda item number 33, request number 19-1680. No, that's not it, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. That is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I have dropped. Robert Melchor listed. Uh, calling agenda item number 33, request number 19-16800. Uh, Robert Melchor, on behalf of Paint Your Paradise, LLC. Mr. Kiyuchi. Good, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Commission. Keith Kiyuchi appearing specially for Robert Melchor. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse the two conflict of interest. Thank you, Commissioner Miyashiro. Commissioners? Motion to approve. Um, motion to withdraw request number 19-16800. Second. And moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 33, request number 19-16800. Uh, the request to withdraw application number 19-15589 is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiyuchi. Uh, so for the record, can we call, uh, I'll call agenda item number four, application number 19-15589 from Picture Paradise, LLC. Again, Keith Kiyuchi appearing specially for Robin Melchor on behalf of the applicant. Uh, consistent with agenda item number 32, we ask that the public hearing be canceled, application be withdrawn. Um, actually, I, since, uh, yes. uh, pardon me, Mr. Chair, uh, since the commission has uh, approved the withdrawal of that, uh, it was appropriate to call the item in case anyone had uh, appeared to testify on this matter. Commission need not take action on this because it, it has been withdrawn. Okay. Let me just clarify one time. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application for the record? Seeing none. Okay, we'll move on to agenda item number five. Is that correct? Thank you, Mr. Kiyuchi. Application number 19-15700 from Omar Kasi, Omar Kasi, LLC. Members of the Commission, Ms. Hirai, Gabriel Provenza on behalf of the applicant. To my right oh, is Thomas Ray Howard, who's the principal and executive chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Miyashiro. Ms. Hirai? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. This application has received zero written protests, zero letters of support, applicants with statutory requirements for the submission of this application. Before the record, a summary of the April 11th preliminary hearing testimony was provided to Commissioner Min prior to the public hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application? Seeing none, Commissioners? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve application number 19-15700. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number nine, uh, number five, application number 19-15700 is approved. 
Thank you. Thank you. On the agenda, item number six, uh, application number 19-16043 from Long's Drug Stores, California. Mr. Chu. Good afternoon, Chairman O'Donnell, members of the commission. Newton Chu on behalf of the applicant, Long's Drug Stores, California, LLC. To my right, Chian Chanda Kiavi. I have previously provided spelling to the secretary. Uh, she is the district leader. Thank you very much. Ms. Horai? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. This application has received zero written protests, zero letters of support. Applicants had statutory requirements for the submission of this application. And for the record, a summary of the April 11th when their hearing testimony was provided to Commissioner Min prior to the public hearing. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to testify for or against this application? Seeing none, Commissioners? Motion to approve application number 19-16043. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number six, application number 19-16043 is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Thank you very much. Moving into the license applications, agenda item number seven, application number 19-16696 from Events International. Mr. Good afternoon, Fishers. Rick Schneider, President and CEO of Events International. Thank you very much. Commissioner? Aloha Tower. Aloha Tower. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schneider, I assume you've done all you need to do, speaking with HPU and security and HPD Correct. and all that? Yes. Uh, I think there's an ops plan that was submitted that uh, has all of these. Yes, thank you. Part of the ops plan, there appears to be a discrepancy in terms of total attendance. It lists 2,000 on the first paragraph and then the third 6,000 people. No, that's a, that's, a, that's a misprint. There's no way we could put 6,000 yeah. people in that okay. <laughs> So it's under the security detail paragraph. So yeah, it's your estimate that must is have been a, uh, 2,000. It's, it's 2,000. Okay, thank you. If, if they're lucky. <laughs> so that's what you say would be probably max attendance? Yeah, I don't see it. That's right now, true. based on ticket sales, we're probably looking at 1,500 max. Okay. Thank you. Put that in your motion, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, motion to approve application number 19-16696. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number <coughs> seven. Application number 19-16696 is approved. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Oh, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Calling agenda item number eight. Application number 19-16697 from Events International Incorporated. Miss Hawaii Preliminary Pageant. Rick Schneider, uh, President and CEO of Events International. Thank you. Commissioners? to approve application number 19-16697. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number eight. Application number 19-16697 is approved. Calling agenda. Calling agenda item number nine. Application number 19-16797 is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Application number 19-16797 is approved. From Hui Aloha, Aina, Momoa. How is that? <laughs> Momoa, right? Momona. Oh, Momona. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Momona. Oh, my goodness. That's, uh, better watch my look. Okay. Other brother. Aloha, Chair. Aloha, Kaki Aka Ka. Just stick to the English. <laughs> Please introduce yourself. My name is uh, Daniel Anthony, D A N I E L A N T H O N Y, and I'm the project coordinator for Hui Aloha and Momona. Thank and I'm you. Katie Zeman, uh, Z-I-E-M-A-N-N, the uh, what is it, authorized agent. Very good. Thank you. Commissioner? This event is in the parking lot of Sears. Yes, is that the Pro Ridge Farmer's Market? Okay. Is that the parking, is that where it's yes. parking lot of Sears? Uh, it's uh, the upstairs. The Malka side parking lot, which, which Farmer's Market is downstairs, right? Right now, but among us, not as they moved it. No, it's not. Uh, it's across from the old CAM uh, movie theaters. Okay. The Pro Ridge Phase 1 upper parking lot. So, up on the rooftop by Macy's? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hot up there. <laughs> 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 okay. 
and they're going to be taking, so they're going to take the whole side of Macy's on that side. Um, they've currently been operating on, on the Makai corner of, of uh, nowhere the, the entrance to go downstairs is, mm -hmm. so it's Makai at that entrance. By where the monorail is parked on that side? Yes. Okay. Um, motion to approve application number 19-16768. Second. Then move and second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number nine. Application number 19-16768 is approved. Mahalo and Thank you. Calling agenda item, item number 10. Application number 19-16298 from Yuri Maru Holdings, Inc. Mr. Goda. Good afternoon, members of the Commission. Neil Gota, appearing on behalf of Yuri Maru Holdings, Inc. To my right is Mr. Tomo Kazukito, that's spelled T O M A, I'm sorry, T O M O K A Z U, last name Kido, K I D O. We have no changes to this report. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Okay, motion to approve um, application number 19 16298. Second. Move this second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 10, application number 19-16298 is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Calling agenda item number 11, application. Um, they have also have 13. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss that? It's a 10. Calling agenda item number 13. Yes. yes. That's um, application 19 16297. Yes. Yuri Maru Holding, Inc. Good afternoon, members of the Commission. Neil Gota, appearing on behalf of Yuri Maru Holdings, Inc. To my right is Mr. Tomokazu Kido. Uh, if this is approved, we would request, if it's possible, for the application for the temporary to be effective on September 1st, 2019. Commissioners? Um, motion to approve temporary application number 19-16297 to be effective 9-1-2019. Second. They're moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Uh, agenda item number 13, application number 19-16297 is approved effective September 1st, uh, 2019. Thank you very much. Let's go back to agenda item number... 11, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Cool. Uh, calling. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Calling okay. agenda item number 19 16535 from Smile Hill, Inc. Good afternoon, members of the Commission. Neil Gota, appearing on behalf of Smile Hills, Inc. To my right is Alicia Marotz, that's spelled M A R O T Z. She's a representative of the applicant. We have no changes to this report. Thank you. Commissioners? Did you see the, um, the protest? Yes, I did. I'm not sure if they're speaking of our premise. We don't have any outdoor area. Oh, okay. um, this is completely enclosed. This is on what, the, the current Vegan Hills. So it's on Wildlife by Kimchi 2 and Big City Diner. So there's really no front. There's no... Yeah. There, there's no outdoor seating. Correct. There's no outdoor right. seating. So I'm not sure what they're referring to. Okay. Yeah. I also note on the... Exhibit D attached to the investigative report, there's indication that there's only acoustic background music. Is that accurate? Exhibit D. So if any type of music is played, it's going to be a, acoustic overhead music. Okay. There's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? Motion to approve application number 19-16535. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 11. Application number 19-16535 is approved. And they have 15 also. And we have 15 also. Calling agenda item number 15. Application number 19-16535. Three, four, from Smile Hills, Inc. Good afternoon, members of the Commission. Neil Gota, appearing on behalf of Smile Hills, Inc. To my right is Alicia Morotz, a representative. We have no changes to this report. Commissioners? Okay, 
a motion to approve temp application number 19-16534. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 15. Application number 19-16534 is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Let's go back to agenda item number 12. Yes, yes sir. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, uh, Ms. Sarai. Uh, yes, this matter calls uh, for the renewal of applications for liquor licenses for fiscal year 2019-2020. Uh, we have provided you with uh, the motion language that with you would, we would like you to recite into the record, please. Thank you very much. Vice Chair Ganabon, <laughs> would you do oh. us a pleasure? Move that all applications for the renewal of liquor license, licenses for the period of July 1st, 2019, to June 30, 2020, which were submitted to the Liquor Commission with the required fee and corresponding documents by July 1, 2019, during business hours 7.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., or postmark no later than 12 midnight on Monday, July 1, 2019, and which meet the requirements of Section 281-45 Hawaii Revised Statutes to be approved except those licenses who which are brought before the Commission in accordance with Section 281-61 for good cause will not have their licenses renewed. I second the motion. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 12 is approved. Calling agenda item number 14, is that correct? Yes. yes. Thank you. Application number 19-16500 for non-stop convenience. Good afternoon, Mr. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. To my right is Mi-Yoon He, the applicant. Uh, the record reflect Wayne Lucas Council. We have no changes to the investigators. Thank you very much. Commissioners? to approve temp temporary application number 19-16500. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 14. Application number 19-16500 is approved. Thank you, Mr. Moving on to agenda item number 16. Application number 19-16648 from MIBB LLC. Gentlemen. My name is Mike Kionamui, M-I-C-H-K-E-O-L-E-N-U-I. And Reiner Kumbra, R-A-I-N-E-R-K-U-M-B-R-O-C-H. Thank you very much. Commissioners? That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion to approve temporary application number 19-16648. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 16, application number 19-16648 is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming, Thank gentlemen. You. Calling agenda item number 17, request number 19-15947 from 939 Entertainment, LLC. This is a request for approval of permanent reduction of license premises. Good afternoon. Uh, Stuart Shirasu, S-T-E-W. A-R-T-S-H-I-R-A-S-U, President of 939 Entertainment. Thank you very much. And I yes. would like to say I apologize. I couldn't make it last week. So. Not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you. Commissioners? Mr. Shirasu, yes. have you been provided a copy of the investigative report? Yes. And would you like to comment on the comments that were made on page two for the... Um, the, uh, I think that the confusion of the issue was uh, whether it was completely separated from our existing liquor license and the um, what, from the area that has liquor versus not does not have liquor. Uh, and the, the question I had proposed, I had asked the uh, investigator was if we do a fire door that can only go out but not allow the liquor side to go in, would that be acceptable? Uh, and he did not know the answer. So that may be why he said he's uncertain whether it's separated or not, but in we did find an alternative uh, fire exit out on, through another exit, so we wouldn't need that connection between the two um, areas. I was more or less referring to um, his opinion of the storage space, which is the reason for deletion. Yes. 
what what is your comment to that? Well, about the, the reason we have the storage space. No, I'm referring to the living quarters or possible game room that was possibly. It's not a game room. Not a game room. Okay, so do you want to elaborate a little? Like, if you look at page two, yes. maybe you want to read the um, investigative report because it's a. Um, it's the the. The reasons is a possible game room and or living quarters for his female dancer. So yes. for him to come to that conclusion, maybe you can explain to us where he may be wrong or why, why he would Well, when we were looking at, uh, the reason we had the space originally was for storage. Uh, and we had a large area for uh, our AC units. But we moved last year to splits, which means we don't need the large central 15-ton uh, central units upstairs. So we removed those, which created a large space, so we can use that AC area as our storage, which means that we now have this larger storage space that's basically not being used at all. And uh, you know, in a, basically in an effort to reduce our rent, uh, we considered options for uh, subleasing it out. Uh, and a couple of options, a pe couple of people have come to us. One was a friend who teaches. Uh, professional pool so he said he needs the space for pool tables which is what I told the uh, investigator uh, but it would be completely separate and it wouldn't have anything to do with us and another option would be because it's we're mixed residential and we have a lot of uh, traveling dancers that come they sometimes need housing and so if we could and there's a shower and bathroom in there that we could convert it into uh, living quarters that they could rent out for a week or a month or something. Uh, but again, it would be totally separate, which is why we wanted to separate it from our liquor license. So let me ask you this. The current floor plan shows that there's locker rooms, makeup rooms, there's a manager's office. Mm -hmm. Where do you plan on relocating that to your, for your plan here? The manager's office is downstairs now. Uh, that's been relocated and it's the the locker room would just be uh, reduced in size. And then the makeup room for the dancers? Also reduced. So they would just squeeze into the, the existing, the other side of that, basically. The locker room would be reduced. But then you're exempting that part of the license now? Yes. yes. There's no liquor up there anyway, but it's just a locker room. Where would they utilize, so, and they still utilize the restrooms up there? No, they would lose that. So they would, so there's still uh, downstairs restrooms, and then they would access the locker room through the stairs, the interior stairs there. There's an interior stairs, is yeah, that the one above to the, the stairs, park? Above the stage. What is separating the two spaces now? The, a doorway. So, so we'd there's a wall we'd, we'd, we'd and block then it a doorway. Off. Yeah. What do you mean by blocking off the door? Seal it off so that you, you couldn't access it. From either side? Right. That's the whole point of, at least that's what our investigator told us, is you cannot have any sort of pass through there. We um, hear from the licensing supervisor. Supervising Investigator Daniel Sato. Can you elaborate, Mr. Sato? You've heard the testimony from the uh, licensee and the question posed by the commission. Could you clarify for us? Okay. So, when I first read the report and sp spoke with the investigator, it was my understanding that it was going to be separated totally, like uh, Mr. Shirasu was saying completely walled off, but as we looked at the floor plans and the floor plan that's actually submitted, it doesn't look like it's going to be completely walled off. Why, so, why not? Well, that was the floor plans you turned in. Oh, so, the first one. Yeah, that's why we redid and, it. Yeah. And, and there, there was possible <coughs> issues of living quarters and game room that was mentioned to the investigator, so I mean... At that point, it was. We also looked at the floor plan, how how it would go, and that's why we put in the report 
as far as that goes. And you stand by your report? Yes. Thank you. Go to the next executive session, please. Motion to convene into executive session. Uh, I'm sorry, could I ask a question? What does their, the use of the non liquor license well, we're, area? We're going into executive session. You can talk to the uh, supervisor investigator. Okay, can I have a move? Second. Moving second. second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. We're now in executive the session. Area. Now back on the uh, on the official record, uh, commissioners. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, before we make the motion, um, just wanted to remind you about the uh, liquor commission rules. Yes. About having all of your employees registered. You mentioned having visiting dancers. Yes. They need to be registered yes. employees with the commission. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And Mr. Shirasu, you've. We, when we questioned you and you made reference of where things have moved, managers' offices and stuff, those are not reflective in your plans that you provided the commission. It's oh, a bit Airbnb. I'm just not using that area anymore for my office. So we used yeah, we had so you two would, managers. You would propose to us what you're proposing to do because you're, you, what you've made for the record is the manager's office is no longer upstairs, it's downstairs, correct? the area that we're using for manager's office. Yeah, there's still a desk and everything there, we're just not using it. Okay, but no. on your floor, your first floor, floor plan, it doesn't show the office on here. So what you're saying you're doing or yes. you're proposing to do yes. is not reflective on the plan you've given to us. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so in order for us to even consider or look at something, we need to consider what you're considering to do or proposing to do, not okay have a floor plan and tell us after what you want to do, you know? Okay. We want to see a very clear floor plan of how you want it to look if we are to approve this request. Okay. Everything exactly where it's going to be. Okay. So that we don't mm -hmm. have any question in our mind of where things are. So um, the motion will be to continue request number 19-15947. Um, is a week good for you to? To redraw the, the floor plan? Work with the commission about yes. and work with the staff on how to yes. remedy some of these issues? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, motion to continue. Request number 19 15947 to. Is it appropriate to also request that we work with a separate investigator that we've been no. using? No, I'm no, sorry. no, 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 no. <coughs> no, so let me continue Rocky, my motion. Push it. Yeah, let me continue don't my motion it. uninterrupted, please. It would be motion to continue request number 19-15947 for one week. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number seven is continued for one week. Following agenda item number 18. <coughs> Request number 19-16749 for Murphy's Inc. Good afternoon, Don Murphy, Murphy's Bar and Grill, Mr. I, Chairman, Commissioners. And this is for the Hawaii Children's Cancer Foundation fundraiser, Mr. Murphy? Correct. And it's going to be held at the number one Irish establishment in the state of Hawaii. Is correct. that not correct? Correct. That is correct. That is correct. I, I don't know. That is correct. Remind us how long you've been doing this? This, will be, this is the 14th year. Thank you for what you do for our community. Thank you. Okay, motion to approve request number 19-16749. Second. Then move this second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 18. Request number 19-16749 is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Calling agenda item number 19. Request number 19-16805 from Kasomi's. Waikiki LLC. Mr. Kiyuchi, uh, Commission on the issue, please. Yes, Chair, thank you. I'm going to recuse the two conflict. Thank you.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Commission. Kate Kiyuchi representing Tsunami's Waikiki LLC. This is a request to uh, waive the 500 foot rule to allow Tsunami's to apply to move their Class 11 cabaret license, which was at 2260 Kuhio Avenue to 1007, uh, 1001 Dillingham Boulevard. To give the Commission some background, the Licensee's lease at 2260 Puhio was terminated <coughs> when the landlord, the feasible landlord, which is the Weinberg Foundation, decided to uh, tear down all of the improvements and start the uh, So it wasn't a situation where the licensee's lease was terminated per se. This location that uh, we're asking for the waiver, and again, the commission is not deciding on the issuance of the license, you're just deciding on the waiver. So the commission would still get to review the public hearing to see whether there's any input for or against. This location is at 1001 uh, Dillingham Boulevard, Space 101. It used to be the location of the old Sylvie nightclub, which at one point was a cabaret Class 11 light license. Uh, the area has no residential around, which is why I attached to Google Maps. It's across the street from Honolulu Community College, on the Malka side, on the Eva side, it's Kokea Shopping Center. On the uh, Diamond Head side, there's another strip mall that has a cabaret license. There's a cabaret license in Kokea Shopping Center as well, all of which is in the submission. Uh, this is an area that's a little unique because there is no residential, which is the reason why the request is being made. This landlord has also was the landlord of the previous cabaret license. Uh, and actually, what I did is the landlord is my client, Tsunamis is my client, so I put the two of them together. Again, this is only to waive the 500 foot rule to allow the application to be accepted and nothing else. The commission retains full jurisdiction for preliminary hearing and public hearing over any submission. Thank you, Mr. Kiyuchi. Commissioners? So it's within 500 feet. How far within 500 feet are we talking about? Uh, frankly, right next door to Dillingham Trade Center is a hostess license. The Leslie's Place, which has a cabaret license, is a little farther removed. They're closer to the canal, but they're definitely, I would say, they're within 200 feet. And on the uh, Diamond Head side, it's probably, again, within 200 feet. There are two buildings. 1001 and 1007 Dillingham. So the um, other cabaret license on the Diamond Head side is one, two buildings removed, but still within 200 feet. Motion to continue into executive session. Second. <coughs> Move and second, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. I would, I will now in executive session. We're now back on the record. Commissioners? Yeah. Okay. Um, motion to approve request number 19 16805. Second. Then moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 19, request number 19 16805 is approved. Thank you. If I could just say something for the yes. record. So uh, the the request on number 19 is in two parts. Yes. I'm going to ask the commission to take no action on number two. So the the uh, the aforementioned approval will only go to part one of the request. It's going to stay a class 11 cabaret, not with the other category. Yeah, yeah. And I will note for the record that um, okay. the, that we only approved the waiver. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can we amend Can we amend the motion just to include uh, request number one, paragraph number one? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, motion to ap um, approve request number 19-16805 for the waiver of rule 382-45.2A. Only. Thank second. You. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 19, request number 
16805 is approved with the verbiage in Vice Chair Gunnabon's motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiyuchi. Calling agenda item number 20, request number 19-16807 from Katina, LLC. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Daniel Kaayaliki, K-A-A-I-A-L-I-I, -A -A -I -I, managing member of Katina, LLC. Thank you. Commissioner? Okay, motion to approve request number 19-16807. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I'll vote aye. Agenda item number 20, request number 19-16807 is approved. Thank you. Thank Calling you. agenda item number 21. Request number 19-16816 from Jermaine's Luau. Thank you. Mr. Kiyuchi. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Again, good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, to Commission Keith Kiyuchi, representing Roberts Hawaii Inc. This is a request to waive the fingerprint and the personal history affidavit only as to Robert Iwamoto Jr. There are actually more um, officers. There's going to end up being seven officers of the new Jermaine's Luau. And what's occurring, and you're not approving this, but the interest in Jermaine's Luau is being transferred from SV, FCH, which is Zippies, to Roberts, Hawaii, because of Mr. Iwamoto's physical condition, getting him to do a fingerprint, getting him to come in, do a personal history is challenging. Um, and I can represent he has had no criminal uh, conviction since his last application, and it hasn't changed. And can you also represent to the commission for the record that he is not actively doing any work? He is not active. He, mm -hmm. um, you are correct, Chair O'Donnell. He is not active. As of July 1st, the president of Roberts Hawaii Inc. will be Roy Fund replacing Percy Higashi. That is correct. Thank you. Commissioner? Mm -hmm. okay, motion to approve request number 19-16816. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 21, request number 19-16816 is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can we have Commissioner Mishiro back, please? Agenda item number 22, AK Corporation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Arnold Green, representative for AK Corporation. To my right is the uh, owner sole owner is uh, M-A-I-T-H-I-A-N-H and N-G-U-Y-E-N. Thank you very much. Commissioner? Mr. Um, Green, how, how long are you going to... Well, we're in the how process many, How now. much time do you need? looking for another place. It's going to be a minimum of six to eight months before we should be able to find something. That's the call, Mr. Green. What is the, um, the condition of the existing premise? Is it Closed. They're closed. requesting approval to renew his license as a requirement of the license going into safekeeping. So motion to approve yep. request. Okay. Yep. I second the motion. 
Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 22 is approved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On agenda item number 23, Volume Services, Inc. Chair, members of the commission, Thomas Berger for the licensee. Uh, we're seeking to have approval to renew the license and safekeeping. Uh, current, currently, there's an application to do uh, a change to the license to a restaurant general, and the licensee is operating under a temporary license. So we need time for the investigator to complete the investigative report. We've been working actively with them uh, to ensure that they have all the information that they need. Thank you. Commissioners? Motion to approve request. Um, agenda item number 23. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 23 is approved. Thank you. Coming agenda item number 24, SM 808 Inc. Chair, I'll recuse myself into yeah. a conflict of interest. Thank you very much. <clears throat> before, before I call the uh, Agenda item. Mr. Cucci, are you? I have, I also have 27 and 29. Thank okay. you very much, okay. Mr. Chair. Uh, and I, I would request we take those out of uh, order. 27, have, 29, 30. I mean, uh, Commissioner Mayor Shiro. Getting his work out today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, okay. Unfortunately, I have a lot of things so, on the agenda uh, today. So. Uh, calling agenda item number 28, uh, 24, correct? Yes. yes. Uh, SM 808 Inc. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Keith Kiyuchi for the licensee. Um, this is Club Evergreen. They were located uh, in an area which has since been demolished. Um, we're going to ask that the license be kept in safekeeping. Uh, we do intend to renew it. She's going to try to find another location, which has proven to be challenging so far. But uh, we'd like it renewed for another year. Mm -hmm. Are we going at it? Dillingham, isn't that the new area? I, you know what? <laughs> I good. did, I did <laughs> offer that to her first because they're both my clients. So. No, I mean there's so much vacant uh, warehouse space. Uh, there. <laughs> there is warehouse space. Yes, Thank you're you. right, Mr. Chair. <laughs> okay. um, motion to approve agenda item number 24. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 24 is approved. Next agenda item is 27. 27, calling agenda item 27, a Regal Food Inc. Again, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of Commission Keith Kiyuchi for the licensee. Uh, Regal Food Inc.'s only retail location is here at the Chinese, China, Chinese Cultural Plaza. They want to keep the license because they're intending to sell it. Uh, they're going to get out of the retail business. Fortunately or unfortunately, um, they're going to stay totally in the wholesale business. So Kerry Lau, who owns the company, has asked me to renew it for another year. He's going to try to find a buyer for the retail business along with the license. Thank you. Commissioners? Okay, a motion to approve agenda item number 27. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 27 is approved. And did you say 29? 29 and then 34 is the last one. Following agenda item number 29, uh, the uh, Sumis, uh, Waikiki. Again, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Keith Kiyuchi for the licensee. This is related to the earlier matter, so we would like it renewed and keep it in safekeeping. Mm -hmm. Commissioner? Mm -hmm. Motion to approve request um, for agenda item number 29. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 29 is approved. Following agenda item number 34, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is request number 19-16815. Uh, good afternoon again, Mr. Chairman, to the Commission. Keith Kiyuchi, representing PV Restaurant Corp. This is requesting a waiver of the temporary license rule. Uh, Prima Trattoria, who's at that location, lost their license on June 30th. They did not renew. Mm -hmm. They continued operating until March 31st. They have entered into agreement to sell it to PB Restaurant Corp. And in case you're curious, this is um, operated by a chef named Paul Bentley, 
who's Australian but does Mexican food, um, high-end Mexican food. So we would ask that it be waived. The uh, license was terminated less than a year ago. Okay. Mr. QG, for the record, you mentioned March 31st. Can you tell us what year? March 31st, 2019, but the license was terminated June 30, 2018. Thank you. Commissioner? Motion to approve request number 19-16. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 34. Request number 19-16. is approved. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kirchi. Can we have Commissioner Carroll back? Please. <coughs> Where are we going? Back to 25? Yes, Thank sir. you. Cheryl, you just sit right there and be comfortable. <laughs> Cheryl, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> you said 25? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Now, calling agenda item number 25, Holly Kulani Corporation. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Karen Winter, W I N T E R, on behalf of Holly Kulani Corporation, uh, DBA Holly Puna Waikiki. This is the formerly known as the Waikiki Park Hotel. Uh, we request approval to renew our liquor license for the following fiscal year and to keep it in safekeeping. The hotel is still undergoing its renovations and we anticipate the um, reopening in mid-October of this year. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to approve agenda item, request for agenda item number 25. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 25 is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Calling agenda item number <coughs> excuse me, 26, New Bangkok, Inc. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Arnold Green, authorized representative for New Bangkok. To my right is Rachani, R A T C H N. A-N-E-E, -E, last name is Senkowski, S-E-N-C-K-O-W-S-K-I. Thank you. Commissioners? Okay, motion to approve agenda item number 26. Second. Moved in second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 26 is approved. Coming, uh, calling agenda item number 28, Cypress Hawaii Food Systems, LTD. Yeah. Motion to approve agenda item number 28. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Uh, agenda item number 28 is approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Calling agenda item number 30. Stack Sports Bar. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, the license was actually picked up today. No action by the Commission is required. Thank you. Uh, calling agenda item number 30. 31. 30. 31. 31. 31. I'm sorry. And item number 31, JCC Inc. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, uh, Arnold Green, authorized representative for JCC Inc. To my right is Ang Huzin, A N H T H U D I N H, the sole owner. Motion to approve uh, agenda item number 31. Second. Then moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 31 is approved. Thank you. Calling agenda item number 32, Rainbow Valley Supermarket, Inc. Good afternoon, Mr. Lee. Good afternoon, Mr. Lee. 
Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, James Lee, representing Rainbow Supermarket Inc. Uh, seated to my right is uh, Mr. Jin Sok Han, A.N. Thank you very much, Commissioners. <laughs> Motion to approve agenda item number 32. Second. <laughs> moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 32 is approved. Yes. Okay. So we've handled 33, correct? Yeah, we're on 36. 36. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, calling agenda item number 36, uh, arts <coughs> cultural merchants. Engine for arts, cultural merchants, etc. You're going to give our May report. Thank you. So on May 3rd, we had our event. Closure happened on time, ended on time. Musicians concluded on time at 10 p.m. and the visual artists concluded by midnight. Our streets were open before 3 a.m. Uh, we had a program coordinator, Lala Ness, who was on site to do the uh, arts entertainment management. She was there till 11. Uh, Michael Gray of Nextdoor was on site to manage beer and wine, and Thomas Frazier managed our operations with HPD safety systems, jam rentals, food vendors, and DTS. Um, we had four food stamps that provided a variety of food that was um, well received. We had our beer and wine service that began at 8 and closed at 11. Um, consumption was completed before 12 and the streets were clear of any type of alcohol or cups. Um, overall, our sales were a little bit lower than the previous month, but what we're hoping to offset is instead of doing kegs and drafts, to move to cans. It's environmentally more friendly to not be using plastic. So we're going to make a little bit of a switch and see if that helps us. Um, HPD Special Duty was on hand from 7.30 till 3. We had a full staff, one sergeant, two blues, and six foot. Um, we did have one small incident where a young man attempted to steal a tip jar from one of our food vendors, and they fled to uh, one of the four entrance exits that are, of course, staffed, and HPD had a fun time um, stopping him. So the tip jar was replaced, um, no one was hurt, um, and that, uh, that person was removed. <laughs> Other than that, there were no incidences um, that we heard of or saw. Uh, we were able to uh, create kind of a cohesive experience for people in that weekend for Chinatown, where there was the Cinco de Mayo celebration on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we tried to play into that by having Son Caribe give our music and have a Latin theme, and then our artist was Costa. So we were really excited. We painted and produced over 13 mural pieces, which have been in display along with um, taken to other areas or on display in other areas in the community. And our cleanup occurred by 2.30. Pickup of portable luas and, for sh and street uh, sweeping was uh, done. And then our city waste bin liner, of course, was replaced. For June, uh, for this month, we actually increased our luas from 2 to 3 at the request of the um, vendor, stating that the two were just getting a little too full. So we had three for May. That worked out well. We're going to continue that with June. Um, we saw about the same amount of patrons and sold about the same amount, a little less. So we're hoping uh, to continue this with our next events. We are taking a brief hiatus in July, just with the uh, holiday weekend. Um, and then we'll be back to ask you for August to December. So, thank, you. thank you for the detailed <coughs> report. Commissioners, do you have any uh, questions? No. Ms. Reed. Uh, Ms. Reed. Yes. Did you receive or are you aware of any noise complaints from either of these two events? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I have heard from DTS or from. Thank you. Thank you. Very unusual to have an incident on Smith Street in New Orleans. A real respectable area. They try to steal the tip. Yeah. Oh. Try. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I feel like HPD no was just waiting required. at the gate. <laughs> they saw him, so apparently everybody gave a clap. And <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Wasn't his day, okay. but very good. Thank you for that detailed yes. report. Thank we you. appreciate it. It's not a problem. Thank <coughs> you very much. Commissioner, commissioner's going to have a type of action. 
On the adoption of decision and orders? No, no action. No action. Thank you. Thank you. No. A motion for the adoption of decision and order for agenda items 37, 48, inclusive. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote uh, the adoption of decision and order agenda items number 37 to 48, inclusive, are approved. Uh, let's move into adjudication, please. Uh, good evening, <coughs> Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Um, Joy Neely, Deputy Corporation Counsel, appearing for the prosecution for today's adjudication. Thank you very much. Calling agenda item number 49, Kamal, uh, Kamamalu, Kamamalu Market. Excuse me. Um, this licensee has requested a continuance to July 11th, 2019, and I have no objection. Thank you. Commission. Motion to continue agenda item 49, Kamamalu Market, to July 11, 2019. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 49 is continued to July 19, 2019. July 11. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. July 11, 2019. Calling agenda item number 50, Brothers Market. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, and I reflect the presence of Bill Harrison on behalf of Brothers Liquor. To my right is the manager, Lowell, L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Last name is Baki, B-A-K-K-E. Do we waive reading of the charge? We do waive reading of the charge. How would you like to plead, Mr. Harrison? We're, we're prepared to enter a no contest plea with mitigating circumstances. Motion to accept the no contest plea. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 50, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Neely, your recommendation? Um, there were previous violations, but for adjudication purposes, this is a first violation. I recommend a penalty of $1,000. Thank you. Mr. Harrison? Yes, we, we would know that uh, Brothers Liquors has been a mom and pop operation in the neighborhood for about over 30 years now. Um, and it's a, a liquor store and a convenience store. We do their best to try to uh, um, anticipate these kinds of problems and correct them. The uh, individual employee was trained properly with regard to um, reviewing licenses and um, unfortunately did not uh, do what was right that, that day. Um, and as part of the employment process, they're notified that they're going to be terminated if something like this should, were to happen, and, and she was terminated. Um, so we're asking that the commission to approve the uh, recommendations. Ms. Levy, was, uh, was uh, ID asked for? Not in this case. Okay. This so is a part of our compliance. Right. Okay. Uh, so we do these every year, and most of these individuals are going to be vertical IDs, so that there's a good indication, a good red flag to all of your cashiers that that person received an ID before they were of age to consume alcohol, purchase alcohol. So please make sure that your employees have been trained to ask for ID and big red flag when it's a vertical ID. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000. Second. Moved and second, all those in favor. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 50, the recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. <coughs> Thank you. On agenda item number 51, Long Strug Store number 10988, Mr. Chu. Good afternoon, uh, Commissioner Abdallah. Commissioner Newton Chu on behalf of the uh, licensing. To my right, Christopher Kamei, K A M E I, district leader. Uh, we waive <coughs> reading of the charge. How would you like to plead, Mr. Chu? Plead no contest. Motion to accept the no contest, please. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 51, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Neely. This is the first violation of sale of liquor to minor. I recommend a penalty of $1,000. Mr. Chu. Uh, yes, this is an unfortunate incident where a, an employee uh, violated our policy on um, making sales of alcohol products. Uh, as you know, we've changed our policy to uh, address these types of uh, 
problems. We now require that when an, an employee is uh, given a vertical ID, they must check with the manager. So we have another set of eyes on it. Um, and in this situation, the employee did not uh, call for a manager. Uh, the employee claimed that she read the date to be 1988 instead of 1998, put in that date, and uh, violated our policy. So it's very unfortunate um, uh, that it occurred. Motion. Oh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Chu. Oh. Is this a store that had all of the opposition? A long store. You're in Waianae, right? This is Makaha. Makaha, right? Yes. You had the opposition from the church. There was one from the church. That is in the back of the store, correct? Yes, yeah. correct. Oh. My my understanding yeah. is that that church actually never came about. I don't believe that was after actually ever stops to be a church. I think that they were looking to go into that location. Um, but as far as I know, I don't know if that church is well, been The point I'm trying to make is there was community yes. opposition, correct? And now you're, um, was the ID checked on this? Yes. It was checked? Okay. Well, be mindful of your neighbors and your employees. Thank you. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 51, the recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. Moving on to agenda item number 52, Sunset Mini Mart. Good afternoon, Chairman and members of the Commission. My name is James H. Stanton. I'm the authorized representative for Sunset Mini Mart. Uh, the owner was here earlier, but he had to uh, uh, leave. We're asking for a continuance uh, until September 18, 2018, in this manner. And the reason is the employee charged, uh, in his case, that the, the, the employer does not represent him, um, has had his hearing continued until September 4 of this year. And uh, I gone over the case with my client and I believe he has a good faith defense, but we are asking for a continuation until September 18, 2019. Ms. Navy, um, I have no objection, but I believe uh, actually September 19th is a Thursday. So. We Correct. Uh, sorry about that. But otherwise, no objection. So, uh, Mr. Stanton, yes. September 19th is Yes, that's, that's, right. that's correct. Motion to continue agenda item 52, Sunset Mini Mart to September 19, 2019. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda <coughs> item number 52 is continued to <coughs> September 19, 2019. Calling. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Members Calling members. agenda Mission. item number 53, Island Colony Aloha Mart. Island Colony Aloha um, Mart. This licensee has requested a continuance to June 27, 2019. I have no objection. Motion to continue agenda item 53, Island Colony Aloha Mart, to June 27, 2019. Second. Move the second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 53 is continued to June 27, 2019. Calling agenda item number 54, Waikiki Beach Market. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, again, and the commissioners. Uh, as the uh, authorized liaison, I'm also attorney for the uh, Grace Lee Licensee and DBA Waikiki Beach Market. We waive the uh, reading of the charges and enter no contest. Uh, also, I would like to explain that the, uh, the absence of the, uh, the licensee. Thank you very that, much because you <laughs> used the verbiage okay. we, and I only see <laughs> you. <laughs> Yes. So we appreciate hearing. Uh, the uh, family had an urgent trip to make to Korea due to family matter. Uh, the, uh, the parents is gravely ill, so they apologize for their absence. Thank you very much. And Mr. D, your plea? No contest. Motion to accept the no contest. Second. Move this second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 54, uh, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Neely. 
Uh, this is the first violation for sale of liquor to a minor. I recommend a fine of $1,000. And if, if I may explain, uh, the uh, husband, Mr. Sang Lee, was on duty that day. He was work, watching the uh, CCT, CCT, um, suspicious activity on CCTV, was very inattentive to the uh, person in front of him, and he made a grave <laughs> error of selling the liquor to minor. And he got an earful from his wife, so I, I assure you that <laughs> this won't happen again. You want to sell liquor or you want to watch TV? No, no, no. no. CCTV, he was to watch the, video. Video. Yeah, the suspicious activity in the corner of the store. Oh, and he was inattentive to the uh, the person in front of him. So I assume he's more afraid of his wife than he is of us? Uh, I, 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 I reserve my judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Daly, do you have anything to comment on the representations? Um, yeah, I mean, in this case, the clerk didn't even ask for Yeah. This was a compliance. This was also a compliance. Mr. Lee, I would remind your clients that um, we do have the authority to suspend or revoke their license for these, especially for these kind of egregious yes, violations. Yes, he's, uh, he's well aware of that. Okay. And his wife also drilled it into his head that pay more attention to the customer in front of you than on CCTV. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000. Second. Moved second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I vote aye. Agenda item number 54, the recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. Following agenda item number 55, Rainbow Valley Supermarket. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. James Lee representing Rainbow Valley Supermarket, Inc., DBA Rainbow Mall Supermarket. Seated to my right, Mr. Jin Seok An, A-N. Uh, we also with the uh, reading of the charges and plead no contest. Motion to accept the no contest, please. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 55, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Uh For, there were three previous violations, but for adjudication purposes, this is the first violation. Uh, I recommend a fine of $1,000. When were the three previous violations? 1992, 1995, 2002. 2002. All right, so it's been some time. Mr. Lee. Uh, yes, uh, the, uh, the person who was on duty, uh, she was uh, terminated. Uh, she didn't do her job right. And also, right now, the, uh, the store where the, the stock transfer is in the works. So, yeah, uh, and I'll let the uh, commission know that this won't happen again under his watch. This is up in the valley? Uh, yes, sir. The Lola Valley. Yeah. Close to the housing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Be very mindful of your customers in that area. Thank you. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 55. The recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. Calling agenda item number 56. Kaka Apple Wine Law. Chairman and uh, Commission, my name is David Hayakawa, H-A-Y-A-K-A-W-A. -A -A I'm here as the attorney for Gateway 31 LLC, DBA Kakako Wine Loft and Sake Collection with our uh, owner, Wing Hei Sin, uh, present with me. And that's uh, Wing, H-E-I-S-I-N-N. -N. Yes, we waive reading the charge and no contest. Motion to accept the no contest, please. Second. Been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 56, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Neely. Uh, this is a first violation of sale liquor to minor. I recommend a fine of $1,000. And was a ID asked for and presented? Um, it was asked for and presented, but it was, the liquor was sold in this. Okay. And was it a vertical ID that was presented? Correct, a vertical ID. Thank you. Mr. Hayakawa. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, Ms. Sin is, is the owner-operator, pretty much the only significant employee for four years. They actually don't really have many young, younger people coming into the, the sake shop. On the date in question, uh, 
she essentially had the flu and was working. And uh, she failed. She got the ID, looked at it, and, and processed the transaction. I will say that she is a meticulous lady who uh, takes this extremely seriously coming into my office. I will say that I, I'm not being the most empathetic person, had to explain to her that this is not the end of her business and that uh, you know, the commission deals with issues like this uh, fairly regularly. But I, I, that does not take away from the fact, obviously, it is a very important issue. But I can rest assured that her, her uh, impression of the seriousness of this case cannot be overstated. And the likelihood that anything like this will ever occur again is practically non-existent in, uh, based on her reaction. So thank you. We would, we would depend on you to counsel her and to help her. And we also have assistance from the administration here if she has any questions about any of the rules and regulations. Yes. I do understand that a place like this probably does not get a lot of minors seeking to illegally purchase alcohol. Um, however, a vertical ID was presented right. and that should immediately raise a red flag whenever you see a vertical ID and should require extra scrutiny on behalf of your employees and licensees. 100%. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000. Second. It has been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 56, a recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Calling agenda item number 57, Kahala, Texaco. Good afternoon, Chair O'Donnell, members of the Commission. My name is Barney Robinson, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. And to my right is Samantha Kim. She's the uh, apparent successor to this business in a few years. Thank you. Uh, the charge is on or about March 2nd, 2019, in the city and county of Honolulu, State of Hawaii, licensee sold, served, or furnished intoxicating liquor to a minor, or allowed consumption of intoxica intoxicating liquor by a minor, specifically Swastika Maharjan at the licensed premises in violation of section 281.78.B1A of the Hawaii Revised Statutes. How would you like to plead? No contest. Motion to accept the no contest plea. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 57, the no contest plea is accepted. Ms. Neely. Uh, there were two previous violations um, in 2005 and 2009, but for adjudication purposes, this is a second violation last one happening um, in March of 2018. Thank you. Mr. Robinson. Well, oh, so I, sorry. So I recommend a fine of $2,000. $2,000. Okay. Thank you. Well, I apologize for having have to be here so soon after our last incident that, that occurred to us. Um, so we're very much aware of underage, we're selling restricted, age-restricted products to underage it's not consistent with the values and the ethics that, that we try to uh, enforce at our uh, station. Um, the incident occurred. Uh, we are we in a, we're in a very tight labor market. We've had more turnover in the last three years than we have in the last 30. So it seems like we've been training almost con consistently for the last three years. We do have a whole section designated in our owner's manual about age-restricted products and the importance of verifying ID. We have the weed card ID program all over the placid, all over the cashier counter. And we also have um, uh, in the register when an age restricted product appears to uh, verify the age. And this is where Sam can better explain the technology and the, this, uh, how, uh, what we're doing to prevent this from occurring again. So in this situation, our employee, Ms. Wallace, accepted the ID and inputted the ID into, or the birth date into our cash register system. Um, at that time, the underage product appears at the top of the screen that the customer is not able to buy the, the product. Uh, she did not, the employee did not see or rec see it on the top of the screen. Since then, about a week after the incident, we changed, we upgraded our registers to a new system. With the new system, we now have to scan the ID to make sure that the, in addition to other steps, to make sure the customer is of age to buy the product. Now, after you scan the ID, um, underage restriction would pop in the middle of the screen as opposed into the top. So it's very visible to the employees now in the middle of the screen. 
Are the employees able, able to override that screen? Unfortunately, they are. We've tried to contact the software um, program of the register and we're not able to bypass that or take away um, that override. But however, we have trained our employees and um, drilled into them how important it is to do proper checks, to check the ID, make sure it's the person on the ID, check the birth date, and put the birth date into the register. So, um, are you training your employees to totally depend, be dependent on the electronic no. device? No, they have to do multiple steps because they still need to make sure the person is who it is on the ID, the picture as well. Thank you. And we're, we're constantly training. We do an annual training, but then uh, throughout the year, as we're witnessing their interaction with, with the customers, we're reminding them the importance of the mm -hmm. age verification. Yeah, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So this new software was implemented through Texaco. Yes. yes. Correct? <coughs> yes. So it's now being used with all the Texacos. Yes. Right? Correct. But the, um, you're scanning the ID, and it's still caution <coughs> to it's coming up and saying that this person is underage and it's still giving you an option to proceed with the sale. No. 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 So are we saying from here forward as long as someone presents the proper ID that they, it's it, it can't happen at all then? If it scan oh, if it yeah. scans correctly, they, uh, if it and excuse, forgive me, if it scans incorrectly, they cannot override an incorrect ID. Okay, so the previous system it was on the top of the screen. Now you scan the ID, it goes to the middle and it says this person is not authorized to purchase. What happens after that? The sale is declined. Mm -hmm. So they have to start all over with a sale or right. they have to, yes. okay. So it's not, so with the Texaco system, you cannot do that. You cannot, you cannot override, override, you cannot override it. it. You, so there, is, there is a button to override. And who has that right to override? Nobody should, mm -hmm. but we can't take away that button <coughs> off of the register, it's not possible. So is it, are they trained to use that, however? No. No. So they're, they're not even aware that it's capable of doing it. It's not a training process that you say, Correct. if you're in a pickle, you rest, press this button. If, if the ID <laughs> does not scan, so there have been situations where the ID has not scanned because there's like a sticker or something um, blocking that ID, and they check that the customer is of age, then they can input the birth date manually. Okay. And then even by manually doing it, the same provision pops up and it says they're not able to purchase, correct? If they're underage. Right, so it correct. appears and they don't know about the override button, right? Then they should not sell. So they it should be foolproof, right? Because scan doesn't go through, then you get the ID, it can't scan, you put it in. Nobody should know about that button other than the management. I mean, we, correct, but I mean, is it a training regimen that you guys are telling them? We're that, telling them that they should not press that button. Okay, to, so they shouldn't know about it. It says the default, button. though. So if the if the cashier or employees press the button, mm -hmm. um, then they'll know what it does, mm -hmm. or it, it goes through the it's steps. Really you know, <coughs> does it keep an audit trail for you folks? Um, is there a report that spits out that says cashier? Can. Every, every keystroke is is. Transact in the electronic log on the so register. You can Good. see how many times that default button yes. is being pressed. But I think to better answer your question, when an age restricted product is scanned, mm -hmm. it says enter ID or bypass. And so it's they're not forced to scan or enter an ID. They can bypass it prior to the uh, entering of the data, either scanning or manually entering the data. Okay. I, I guess, you know, we've heard from Texaco the past and you know we thought that this this new system was going to be a good improvement for you guys mm -hmm. in introducing to all Texacos mm -hmm. but obviously it's still with the same situation that you're still able to override the sale if you're not checking the audit records to say cashier 2 seems to be defaulting <coughs> through every sale so it has to be some because we'll be back in this situation again basically is what I'm saying and there's no perfect system to it, but as we hear how systems are being enhanced and we hear of people putting a lot of money into these type of systems, mm -hmm. yet is it the, the check and balance here, is, is it working, right? Because if there's a button to get you out of it, we're back to square one again, right? But the system is a definite improvement because we're able to scan, which speeds up the process of having to have to 
manually Manual. enter the data and making a keystroke error or a visual error, the 89 or 99 right. uh, mm -hmm. issue. I think there. what we're saying so is we're this, this technology is a tool, mm -hmm. but if you folks are not monitoring your employees and checking up on their actions regularly, we're going to see you again for this same violation. And we don't want to see you again because we're already in a situation where the recommendation from the prosecutor is for a $2,000. <coughs> That's our maximum right now. So if you folks are in here again very shortly, you know, we're in a situation of do we find you the maximum again or do we suspend your license? Correct. And we don't want to be in that situation. Yeah. So I, I would recommend seeing this as a tool, not a, you know, not the end all be all that you know it's gonna do your jobs for you. It's right. your responsibility as a licensee mm -hmm. not to make these sales. So it's your responsibility to make sure your employees are not making these sales. And so I would recommend get doing an audit regularly and if there's employees that are regularly punching in the same dates or mm -hmm. put pressing that default or doing pressing the bypass, those you can easily recognize that they're gonna be a problem. Well, you can imagine our horror and dismay when this happened again to us yes. so recently. I can't, and that's we, we why, we're, have a, that's a why we're having parent. this discussion on how to avoid it in the future. If I, if I may, Vice Chair, uh, Ms. Neely, just for the record, will you verify that the ID was checked? Um, they asked for ID. They did, okay. Yes. They did. I just wanted to make sure for the record. Thank you. So, Mr. Robinson, you're, you're in a hot district. I mean, I, I think I saw you on a new Maybe a couple months yes. ago as well. Yes. So you're um, a yeah. very busy store yeah. and you're on the map right now. That's so right. you got other activities going on over there you got to worry about. So this should be one of the least amount of things to worry right. about. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Anything further, Commissioner? Motion to approve the recommended fine of $2,000. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 57, the recommended <coughs> fine of $2,000 is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda, agenda item number 58, Safeway store number 2747. The provincial. Huh? No. This is um, mm -hmm. in the new center. Good afternoon, Chairperson, members of the Commission, Ms. Irai, Gabriel Provenza on behalf of the licensee. To my right is Chuck Ungos, uh, last name U-N-G-O-S. He's the store director of the store in question. Uh, we waive redoing the charges and wish to enter a plea of no contest. Motion to accept the no contest plea. Second. Move this second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 58, the no contest plea is accepted. This is the first violation of sale of liquor to minor. I recommend a fine of one thousand dollars. Mr. Provenza. <coughs> okay, so this uh, violation occurred in the uh, context of the uh, compliance, the liquor stings that, that were going on um, in March, and in this case, the, the sales clerk did request the ID. The ID was presented vertical format. Should get those flags going off. Um, she entered in the. A birth date and then according to the manager and from what I can tell she was very surprised to have gotten a violation because the the sale process after she put in the date and she was kind of at a loss for why it happened and then in the course of their investigation they, they automatically suspend for three days and they conduct their internal investigation is, is the standard um, and while talking to her she was like well Maybe I punched in the 88 instead of 98. And then they went and they confirmed it with the computer. Um, kind of bizarrely, this happened with another Safeway store. Um, as a result of this, the <coughs> Safeway has implemented a new policy that the vertical IDs come out, they're going to get a certain second person involved. You know, just as you we were saying with the previous case, you know, the, the technology is good, but it's nothing if you don't have the, the people kind of working at it. So getting a, a second person on it, they think will will be an improvement and uh, hopefully prevent this kind of mistake, which this one seemed to have been. Thank you. Is that policy you just described uh, going to be effective across all the stores here? I'm, I'm going to be recommending that. So there's a, a kind of a security age-restricted contact that our office has. 
and I'm going to be talking to him about implementing it store wide if it hasn't occurred already. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a question. What is the second person? They, so the manager, once they call over, I think the idea is, first and foremost, you get a second pair of eyes on it. Mm -hmm. And the person that sees the vertical ID, you know, so they're not embarrassed by the manager, is going to look hard at the ID, and they're going to you know, weigh in as the manager comes in. Well, you know, here's a vertical ID. I want to make sure this is the date I want to punch in, get a confirmation from the manager, who, you know, in theory, is going to be even more skilled at, at doing an ID check. So the manager witnesses the employee punching in the, the birth date. Correct. So they call for the second person, they come over, they wait until the manager comes over and then they enter the birth that's, date. That's how the policy should work. I, I imagine there's going to be some, you know, stickiness getting that policy going and if the manager's not always right there, but that's the intention is to have the manager come and check every time. I would strongly recommend that you instruct your uh, employees, if it's a vertical ID, they're not to process the sale until they get the manager's approval. That's the sale, the process. Anything else? Mm -hmm. <coughs> to approve the recommended final one thousand dollars. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number fifty-eight. Uh, the recommended fine of one thousand dollars is approved. Thank you. Calling agenda item number 59, Monacale Liquor and Grocery. <coughs> Mr. Harrison and Mr. Kim. Good afternoon once again, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. May the record reflect the presence of Bill Harrison on behalf of um, the Joy Luck, Inc., the licensing this matter. And to my right is John Kim, J O H N K I M, um, the proprietor. In this matter, um, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, we'd like to request a, a continuance of the hearing on these matters. Um, I have not received disclosure on the, the matter, and uh, I need that in the preparation for any possible hearing. Oh, that's correct. I have, I have no objection. Um, okay. I think, yeah. do, you have a, do you have a date, Mr. Harrison? Or? Um, I would prefer after, um, July 25th or after. I know that that's, July 25th is a, is a Thursday. Yes. Yeah, I believe it's a Thursday. I, I, I can't confirm on the scheduling, but I, I can check on that. Do you want to just set for next available? Okay. Yeah, for next available. So, so long as after July 25th? Yeah, and, okay. and we can work it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next available after July 25th. Okay. Motion to continue agenda item 59, Monocure Liquor and Grocery, to the next available date after July 25th. Well, honor after. Or honor, honor, honor after July 25th. That'd be fine. Thank second. you. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 59 is continued on or after July uh, 25th, yes. 2019. Thank you very much. Calling agenda item number 60, Monacale Liquor and Grocery. And once again, uh, good, good afternoon. The director of the presence of Bill Harris on behalf of Joy Link Inc. and the licensee, and to my right again is John Kim. And, and similarly, we'd like to request a continuance of the proceedings. We haven't uh, obtained disclosure as of yet. That's correct. Uh, I have no objection. Thank you. And Mr. Harrison, would you like this to be also next available on or after the 25th of yes, July? Yes, I would. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion to continue agenda item 60, Monarchia Liquor and Grocery, to the next available date on or after July 25th, 2019. Second. Moved second. All those in favor? Aye. I vote aye. Agenda item number 60 is continued to the on or about July 2019. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Do we have any uh, oh. administrative uh, one matter? For the matter? I'm sorry. I, I apologize, oh, Mr. Chair. One for the matter. Um, my client had submitted a, a license renewal, um, paid his fee, and recently, apparently, they refunded back his <coughs> fee. So we're wondering what is happening. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Harrison. This um, item has not been agendized, so we cannot, we, we can't take any action or entertain it on the agenda. Okay. Um, so you can um, call or come in and speak with our administration during regular business hours um, to, to ask your question. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Do we have any administrative uh, matters? Uh, I would just, if I just very uh, quickly, the, yes. the report that I put in, uh, in your desk folders, that uh, American Renaissance, they were not scheduled to appear before you, but that's just an informational copy. This okay. is their post-event report, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Research, do you have any questions? What's your pleasure? Meeting adjourned.